So we've known for a couple of years now that we need to do something quite significant with the building. Now, of course, in the intervening period, we've had COVID and that's transformed many of our views about how we will live and work in the future. So you know that broadly the building is split into two parts. Um, we've got one birdcage walk, I'm standing here now, and three birdcage walk. The proposal is to grant a long lease on three birdcage walk and to use the money that we will get from that long lease to invest in one birdcage walk. We think that we, the proposal is the most financially responsible and exciting proposal to really secure the uh, building for future generations, to make sure that we've got the right amount of space for both staff and members going forwards. And we really believe that this will be an exciting beacon for the future of engineering. Three Birdcage Walk is currently largely occupied by tenants with the remaining space used by our staff support teams. Um, with relocating the staff into one birdcage walk, we achieve the whole charitable activities within the one birdcage walk facility, um, where we already have our lecture theatre, um, our library, the marble hall, all the meeting rooms that you come and use if you visit our headquarters building. We've worked hard with the design team to produce design proposals which incorporate flexibility, reflecting the fact that we're in a changing world um, and that this project is a long-term project. Um, to ensure the building for our long-term future. We have features such as retractable seating within the lecture theatre, enabling that space to both be used as a lecture theatre as it is now, but also exhibition space and conference space um, to ensure that we are ready for what, whatever the future holds. Another element of the design is improving the accessibility of the building. It's always a challenge with heritage buildings. The two fundamental changes we've introduced is a ramp access to the um, front entrance, ensuring that everybody's coming into the same reception area, and also a lift which goes directly from the basement all the way up to the roof space. So again, ensuring that everybody can access all areas and facilities within the building. Finally, looking at the um, energy and carbon impact. Um, as a charity, we're committed to um, ensuring a net zero future. We already have a lot of embodied energy within the building, there's nothing we can do about that. But what we are doing through this project is significantly improving our operational energy through the introduction of low carbon technology and fabric improvements. The project's been through quite a lot of due diligence. Uh, the Finance Board, for example, has looked at it from the point of view of the cash requirements and the contingencies. Uh, the Strategy Committee has looked at it from the point of view of, uh, of the fit of the project with the future plans for the institution. Uh, the Audit and Risk Committee has gone through the risk register and have made their comments and made some additions to it. Uh, and we've been talking to the, uh, the pension uh, trustees uh, about the covenant that the building provides to the defined benefit pension scheme. And then finally we've got an independent team which includes external representation who are looking at it at the project entirely independently. Um, so at this stage, early stage in the project, what we've tried to do is to make sure that we've uh, done a thorough process of due diligence and that therefore we can put the project to the membership with some confidence. We're in your hands. We know that we need to do something to the building. It is now urgent and whatever we do needs the two-thirds support of the membership. Frankly, I'd be delighted if we had 100% support of the membership. So please do take the time to consider this proposal and give us your vote. We're in your hands.